And this is what I'm going into this band with. And I kind of grew up in a place where you necessarily couldn't sit down at dinner and talk about these things. So I brought them, you know, to the stage. And what I, I believe what began defining us a blood and fire is I had come not too far before that to believe in Christianity. This is right after my friends are dead and my friends are still dying. And my whole message is not necessarily with the old Zaya where they would more or less boil down to believe in God, believe in Jesus. My message was this belief that I have is the only reason that I'm not dead like the rest of my friends because there's parts of me that don't want to be alive. And the only thing that is keeping me alive is my belief in God. And that's what I had to share, not just believe in God, but believe in God because I never, you know, there's no promise your life is better. There's no promise that, you know, people you care about aren't going to pass away. There's no promise that horrible things aren't going to happen. But I believe in God because that's the only reason I ever made it through that period of my life. And I believe that was the, the, the new message at the time, was not just believe in God, but I believe in God and this is what has happened to me. And I'm not just some uh, kid who you know was raised, uh, some pastor's kid who's had a, a perfect life and I'm up here telling people to believe in God. I'm saying that my entire life, even before people I care about passing away, has been really not that good and that I found a reason to live and a reason, you know, to do anything in, in my, you know, my beliefs in, you know, in Christianity, Christ. And that's what I wanted to push was, this isn't just a bunch of people up here telling you what to do, this is someone trying to offer a solution to you and that I hurt and that it's not easy, you know. I'm not necessarily the type of person that walks around with a smile all the time, but I still think there's a reason, you know, a reason to be positive and a reason to push forward and that there's nothing wrong with being hurt. There's nothing wrong with, you know, depression and things like that. They're natural, like don't let people tell you you're a freak because you're depressed or you're hurt. And my mother was awesome. But besides that, I had nobody to turn to. Um, no one ever, you know, to talk to about anything. And, you know, I wasn't raised on any religions or anything, but for me, the first time as I experienced, you know, my Christian experience, that was my reason to stay around, you know. And, you know, I became a Christian the, the day that I more or less was going to, you know, I completely planned my, my suicide. And, um, you know, we had a car that was parked in a garage on the side of the house. And I knew that simply with a few towels under the door and a full tank of gas that I could end my life, you know. And, you know, if that didn't work, you know, I could get a hold of a gun or something. But there was a way to, you know. And it, was, it wasn't a cry for help. I never told anybody, hey, I want to kill myself. It was, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to kill myself and get it over with. And I don't want to tell anybody because I don't want anybody to stop me. Because this isn't a cry for help. This is, I just want to die, you know? And I took all of those feelings with me. Writing Blood and Fire 
something that I, I definitely remember bits and pieces of it really well. We wrote the entire record in my parents' basement of their, their old house in two different rooms in the basement. We also wrote a little bit in, um, in this church called The Barn. It was very, it was very collaborative. Everybody had ideas, everybody had parts. You know, Jesse would have random guitar parts. I remember Russ coming up with drum things, and you know, it was very, it was very much everybody together. You know, doing their thing and working together it was great. I remember Russ coming over to my parents' house, and he and I just sat on the floor and jammed on guitar for a long time. And he started playing the beginning of Ravage Ritual, and he and I kind of wrote about half of that song just on guitars and in the basement. one day that I guess Russ couldn't come over and it was just me and Jesse and we wrote Lives of Serpents, A River of Tears and A Fall Farewell both right after each other in a period of like one hour. We wrote all the music for it and uh, that was really cool. I, I remember Jesse just started playing the, the drums and I just played the simplest riff ever over and we were like yeah. Blood and Fire, you know, we went to Barry Pointers to do that album. The band I knew was completely different than the band that showed up at the studio, and thank God they were like a thousand times better <laughs> than the old band, so it worked out. It worked out awesome. Russ was uh, uh, super quiet, really arty, really soft-spoken. He even played softly. I kept having to tell him, play with aggression, play harder. <laughs> you know, more aggression, more precision. My fondest and biggest memories, I have two biggest memories of recording the album. One is really simple. There was, uh, in To Think of You, that song, there's this part, there's this double bass part in the song. And I remember Dan, when the part would come in, it's just like, da -da 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 -da. I remember he would stand there and pretend he had a gun and go, da -da 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 -da, right with the song, and he had his pompadour and it would flop. And I just, I just remember cracking up at that. But my biggest, my biggest memory of recording Blood and Fire was, I've tried to stay in the studio, you know, as much as I could. I love being in the studio. It's, it's, it's something I still love to this day. And I remember hanging out and playing all the bass and playing guitar. Yeah, playing guitar, of course, and played most of the bass. So I was in the studio for a while. And I remember when it was time for Dan to start doing his first vocal, we didn't want to stress him out. So I, I know I went into Barry, the guy who recorded the album, I went into his house. And I remember I was just sitting on his computer. and probably in there for a couple hours, maybe an hour or something, and, and Jesse goes, comes in the house, like runs it, Brett, Brett, you gotta come outside, you gotta hear this. Walk into the studio, and it's, uh, to think, or it's, uh, Lies of Serpents, uh, and it's the first time that, you know, I'd ever really heard it, and I hear Dan's vocals for the first time in the song, and I just remember just being in shock how awesome he sounded you know I said a little bit before about Dan not finding his voice yet and not sounding very good well that died that day and from then on he sounds like you know like a maniac but I just remember you know we knew the music sounded good we had heard it we knew that the track was going to sound good but it was all about what Dan was going to do on top of it and how his voice was going to end up recording and I just remember just being floored by how he sounded and everybody was so excited me and Russ were thrilled and Jesse was thrilled and it was just yeah it was just a moment that I'll, I'll never forget the first time I heard that it was awesome